So the next topic we're going to cover is building. I'm doing a guide about dual. Um, there's a lot to it and building is also a part of it, but I'm not going to be going over exact builds on every single character, obviously, because I just don't have time for that. That would take way too long. So I will be going over the basic starts that you do in dual, um, the order in which you build things, um, starter builds at the fight for red, general counter building, um, basic stuff like that. Remember, every single build uh, every start of a build and end of a build can all vary super heavily depending on your god, your playstyle. So I'll be glossing over like general stuff altogether, but keep in mind it can change a ton of different ways based on, you know, a god's passive, ways they're played, things like that. Um, I will be giving some examples at the end of this, so after I go over uh, the stages of building and stuff like that and explaining it, I will give some examples of um, brief games and what you could do to counter build based on certain gods and things like that. So anyways, let's get into the basic builds. Starting off at the beginning of the game, obviously, is the starter builds. This will very much factor into the one of the next steps of the guide which is the fight for red, which is ridiculously important. So I'll sort of mix um, this start together, uh, the information with the build with the fight for red as we go along here. All right, so let's get started on the starter builds that you generally see uh, in Ranked Duel. Um, this first one, we're going to be going over hunters as well as some assassins would typically build these sort of things. Um, some builds that you could see. Uh, normally, first off, I should start, start by saying... Attacker's Blessing is, without a doubt, the strongest um, starter item in the game for pretty much all physicals, um, or most of them, other than some warriors and stuff like that. So, uh, Attacker's Blessing is going to be built, or it's going to be thrown into almost, like, every single build nowadays. It's, it's it's really necessary unless you're getting, like, Warrior's Blessing, or you're a mage. Um, normally, you know, you can go Mage's Blessing or Bancroft's, but that's not what we're talking about. So, let's get started. So, uh, a very common build, and my favorite build, is the Attacker's Blessing, Tier 1 Transcendence, or uh, Heartseeker, if you're going in a, or Heartseeker, or even a Hydra's, uh, depending on what you want. But this gives a crazy amount of power early game, a decent bit of MP5, um, and then you can get two of each potion for sustain. That is a start that I typically run all the time, um, but you can change this start uh, to how you please. Um, it doesn't always have to be a morning star. I'll get this out of the way here right now. Um, there are different starts you could do, like... Uh, uh, if you go mace, you're going to get 15 power, but you only get one of each pot. This would be a more aggressive version of this start. Um, but it only would really work on characters like Thanatos, where you get one health potion and one multi-potion. Um, so typically, there's different um, variations of this attacker's blessing, and it's your one item. Variation, uh, mace being the, the most amount of damage you could do in the early game. Uh, Morning Star, Tier 1 Morning Star being um, probably the second most amount of power for the most part. That's somewhat efficient. And then if you really wanted to, you could take the slower route and more careful with Tier 1 Boots and 3 of each potion. But most likely you are going to be stacking, so generally you're going to start the Morning Star if you're a hunter or a character you're going to start stacking on. Um, if you're going to be building into Transcendence in this build, also uh, transitions into uh, the Spike Gauntlet, which is pretty much the same thing. Although you don't get as much power, but you get a little bit of lifesteal if you're also building into Devos. But, um, honestly, right now, Transcendence is just a much better item than Devos, and it works uh, a lot better in most builds in general. Um, so there's also other variations of the start, um, where you can get one of each Chalice and just rely on the physical power as well as the eventual penetration that you get from Attacker's Blessing, and rely more on a passive start, um, whereas you don't have as much damage with... Morningstar, or Mace, or, or the mobility of Boots, I guess. Um, normally, if I'm going to go into a Boots build, um, for example, and I'm on a character I'm not extremely comfortable with, or I want, or I'm not comfortable with how much sustain they have early game for the Fight for Red, I will go two Chalices. I know some people think this start isn't that good, but at the same time, these people that say that um, will be building Tier 1 Boots, which only gives you so little movement speed. At the same time, you're, you're saving gold, right? It's basically the same thing, and by the time you back, you'll... You know, maybe even have second tier boots or full tier boots even. You never know, right? And there's also another variation of this. Um, this is very popular on most ADCs. And that is to go Chalice um, and also a bunch of multi-potions um, with Attacker's Blessing. So what you can do is pretty much just kind of rely on left clicks. A lot of Apollos um, on hers like to do this sort of start. And then there's the last two types of start starts, which are Charge of Morningstar and um, Health Potions or Mana Potions, depending on what you're doing. Although I don't really recommend this build, um, because Attacker's Blessing is just too damn good. 
the second you get that item online with a pen, the early game, like literally a tagger's blessing changed the meta. I don't recommend this build. There's also other variations of starts, which I don't prefer as much, but people who like to be a little more passive and play around having a lot of health could rush um, Blackthorn. This also works on some warriors, but some ADCs like to do this, as well as Assassins. I don't really recommend it. Um, it's okay. It's just a more passive playstyle, in my opinion. Get a few potions, things like that. Let's move on to the more tankier starts of Duel. Now, these are more or less pretty much used mostly on warriors, but um, depending on your playstyle and your god, um, they can be used on... Any number of characters like assassins, mages, hunters, guardians, all these things. But normally you see most of this stuff, uh, mostly in warriors. So you got your bare bones, um, attacker's blessing, morning star, healing potion, mana potion. We've been over that. It's a very common start in duel. I use it all the time, just because I prefer going transcendence or hydras with certain characters, like Kali, for example, is one that I could use this on. But a very common item that is used on these characters like Erlong Shen, tankier warriors, uh, is Warrior's Blessing. Um, it's a really good item for a more passive star, considering it heals you every 10 seconds, um, as long as you, you know, hit the enemy. So it's pretty useful. Um, combine this with the Double Chalice start, I find, um, is, is pretty good, um, considering, you know, the fact that you get so much sustain based on, you know, having Chalice, not having to worry about buying more potions. You can do that. Um, you could buy Tier 1 Boots. You could implement any of the starts that I mentioned previously. Just um, keep in mind, it's sort of the same formula of buying one starter item, a Tier 1 item, potions, or just potions, and the starter item, based on that sort of thing. Um, so any of the starts that I mentioned with Attacker's Blessing, you could swap out for Warrior's Blessing. Just find what fits, but this is typical stuff that you'd see. There's uh, this, you could go Boots, Potions, or just straight up 5 Potions of each, if you really wanted to. Then we have other starts with Warrior's Blessing that lead into... Um, different specific sort of things like uh you could go the cudgel i think that's how you pronounce it that goes into blackthorn runeforged or frostbound generally you're going to go into um, either blackthorn normally sometimes a runeforged depending on how much cc your character has same thing can be said for the warrior's blessing um into the round shield which can be built into a number of things Some more popular than others are the glad shield and berserker shield berserker shield for example could be good on bologna could be good on arlong shen um and then Gladius Shield could be Kukulun, things like that. So, like, it's more of a tankier, a sustainable start um, that comes with the Round Shield or the Cudgel, depending on what you're going into. So before we get into this build, um, we're going to skip straight to the Attacker's Blessing short bow, just because I want to mention how there's a reason I didn't actually um, show it in the Hunter's build. Um, it can be, if you really want to, but I personally don't recommend it. I've tried this build a lot, um, and the low amount of sustain that you have, normally with a Hunter, you're, you're going to work, you're going to want to focus on Poke, and all that stuff, and, you know, sustaining as you go, and with only a few, a very limited amount of potions, you're normally not going to win the early game fight for red. So, sometimes this works okay, uh, if you have a lot of pressure with a warrior and stuff like that, but remember, like I said, you could also switch out, um, warrior's blessing, uh, for the attacker's blessing, all that sort of thing. Next build we're going to be going over is the thousandfold blade star. This is not a very common build, but it's typically what, um, gods like Arachne, um, sometimes Kali, Mercury, things like, or gods like that build to rush a hasten, maybe a Vaka could do it. Um, it's not a very common start, and it's kind of risky, but if it pays off, then it works really well once the item is actually finished. Next up, we have the Mage Starts. Mage Starts are actually very, very simple compared to all the other ones. There's so many different combinations and stuff like that you can do, but typically with Mages, they're going to be all based around <clears throat> this item right here. So yeah, let's go over it. Uh, I'm not going to be around the bush. This is the, without a doubt, probably the best start you can ever do uh, in Duel as a mage. But there are variations of it which make it a little more comfortable for people who aren't as used to battling for sustain for the early game, for the early game fight for red. Uh, but normally, Talon Trinket and you get two potions. If you are playing a god that has a little more sustain, like Hades for example, I would go uh, Talon Trinket and two mana potions, um, as well as Anubis. As long as you're comfortable with, you know, the amount of lifesteal, the amount of poke you're taking, and you're careful around it, um, you can afford to go this start. But if you are newer to duel, um, and you're not as familiar with the characters or the early fight for red and how careful you have to be based on what little sustain you have, this item does give, like, a ton of a good stat. I don't know why the stat things aren't showing up. Um, it gives quite a good few good stats as well. Bunch of mana, bunch of power, decent bit of lifesteal, so you have to use that to your advantage. But if you're not used to the item as much... I would suggest going into a Mage's Blessing and uh, a Tier 1 tiny, or tiny Trinket. 
because this gives you five potions to work with. You can go three mana, three health, depending on the type of character you're playing, etc., etc. Um, there's also a bunch of different variations you can do in this. I enjoy going the Tiny Trinket because it just gives a tiny bit of lifesteal um, and you're building into bankrupts either way, which is what you should be trying to rush 100% of the time as a mage. Uh, it's without a doubt the strongest item in the entire game for duel on mages. But there's also different starts. You can go like Magic Focus, which gives you uh, two less potions, but it also gives you a 25 magical power, which is quite a bit more than the actual tier 1 bankrupts here. But yeah... You can try this with a bunch of different things. Uh, that's why the mage builds are really simple com in comparison to the other ones. Because you can go just magic focus. You can go spell book depending on if you want to stack. You could also go into like a warlock sash. I don't recommend stacking as much nowadays. Simply because Bancroft's is just so good of an item that if you attempt to stack, by the time it takes you to get the, get the stacking item online and even build it, the people that rush Talon Trinket are going to have a full Bancroft's online and are just going to out DPS you up the ass. No doubt about it. <laughs> so I don't recommend stacking builds as much anymore, but you can do it uh, if you would like. You can just stick it with the Mage's Blessing or go straight into a tier 2 of your stacking item. Um, but like I said, the more common starts, 100%, or the are Bancroft-oriented um, um, builds. There's also a separate start I like to do with Mage's Blessing. This is something I do on Guardians, because typically Guardians struggle with different forms of sustain, and you're... Not really going to be able to as much get away with rushing a Bancroft's just because your early game and stuff like that isn't going to be as good. This is like a very specific thing if you're on Guardians. Um, this is something I typically do, but I'll go one of each Chalice so I'm not wasting money on tons of potions. I get three of each potion in the early game sustain, and then I can just go straight into my boots, defense, yada 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 Bancroft's. We'll get into that here on the next stage of it. But there's also the typical starts. Um, this is actually the highest amount of DPS you can get on a Mage. Uh, it's like the tier 1 mace uh, physical build of it, but you can go attackers into magic focus, which I don't really recommend on mages. Uh, mages blessing is a really good item on mages in general. You know, the per 10% of missing mana, all that extra stuff, and you also get 10% CDR com in comparison to a bit of magical power and a bit of pen over time. But if you're going like a super hyper aggressive start, you could choose to rush um, straight into a spear of the magus, for example. Typically, if people start with magic focus, that's what they build into, just because that item is really good on a few characters. But yeah, as you can see, it's the same sort of variation that you can use on other characters. You could put this on a mage, switch out these items for anything, uh, any tier one item, depending on what you're going into. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the starter builds. As you can see, it's all sort of forming together. It's pretty much just different variations of the same format we've been following. Eventually, these builds will become just sort of second nature to you. All right, let's get started on the mid to late game portion of the build guide. So to start off, I want to mention that Attacker's Blessing is, or your starter item, is going to be in the space behind here. I'm not going to actually add it into every single build. Um, so if we had Transcendence Boots, for example, we would uh, account for Attacker's Blessing being right here. Or if you were just to rush Transcendence, for example. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's go over some builds, uh, as well as like general counter building, uh, little tips here and there. We'll go over real counter building here as we go along. But let's start off with a build that I would build, for example. Now... You're going to start off with your stacker item. Um, typically, you're going to go your very first item here, obviously, is your first item. But you could build a number of things here, like depending on your start. Like, let's say you started with a tier 1 mace. You could throw in uh, you can throw in a crusher. You can throw in a beat stick, depending on how much sustain they have. Uh, or you could go transcendence or into your other stacking item. This is just an example. You could go devos here. But after your stacking item, you were, you're going to want to go into your boots. Now, a lot of people ask me whether or not it's okay to rush boots before your stacking item, and I'd say that depends heavily on what god you're playing. If I'm playing a god like a, an assassin, for example, that needs to get closer to my opponents to do damage and, you know, actually escape like a ranged opponent, for example, I would rush boots. But if I'm playing a more safe character or I can just straight up afford transcendence, then I will build that so I can start building off power. But I also have to keep in mind I'm not going to have boots for a while so I won't have the, that mobility. It depends on how comfortable you are uh, with being passive and how much you need mobility is when you're going to be rushing this. Now, keep in mind, Warrior Tabby can actually be switched out for Ninja Tabby. Uh, Reinforce Greaves, depending on the CCR. I'm not really going to go over that because that's very specific, but typically you're going to go Warrior's Blessing or Ninja Tabby. Warrior's Blessing, Warrior Tabby or Ninja Tabby. Uh, sometimes you can go Travelers. It's going to get nerfed here really soon, but some people do enjoy it. It makes it so you're actually able to get back to waves a lot faster. Sometimes it's actually work f worth for farm. Uh, you can experiment with that if you'd like, but typically I would go into a Warrior Tabby or a Ninja Tabby. 
Next up, after you have your stacking item, as well as your boots, or just your first item in general, like Crusher, for example. Let's say you went Crusher boots, Stone Cutting boots, something like that. Like, typically, you're going to have two items before you rush defense because they're your power spike items. And then you're going to go into your defense item. It could be a Breastplate. It could be a Genji's. Typically, I like going Breastplate or Genji's, um, depending on if I need cooldown or not. Uh, Ability-based characters, for example, I love to go Breastplate and Genji's. But if I'm up against someone who's going to build a lot of crit or another ADC, uh, for example, and you don't need cooldowns, Nemean is worth over, obviously. So basically, to put it in summary, stacking item or power item, boots, and defense. Also keep in mind, if you do rush boots in the boot start, uh, typically you're going to want to go into Breastplate or your defense item immediately after. Sometimes building into that next item, like a Crusher or, an ex or a Transcendence or an expensive item after you've already rushed boots, can put you back quite a bit, because if you think about it, uh, Bancroft's, uh, the, the power spike of someone who gets a Transcendence before you, or like a stacking item online, it's going to put you behind. So typically on Warriors, you're going to start with uh, boots into your defense item. doesn't always have to be this exact item, but that's just an example. Once you're done with your defense, typically you're going to want to go into a penetration sort of item. This, is, this depends heavily on a lot of things, obviously, like how much defense your opponent has. But with the dual meta, how it is right now, um, Executioner and stuff like that is not actually as worth as it once was to rush for percentage penetration. Nowadays, with the amount of defense we have and a Crusher, especially on ADCs and stuff like that, you're typically want, gonna wanna build something like a Crusher at this point in the build. But things can tr change drastically, obviously, depending on what you're up against. If you're up against someone that has a crazy amount of sustain, you know, you, you might wanna go with Toxic Blade, but generally, you're gonna wanna build an item that has a decent bit of pen in it. If you're up against like a tankier character, like a Bologna or an Erlong, for example, you could you could throw in an Eggsy there. Um, you could throw an Eggsy. Uh, to rush that penetration percent penetration before you start countering but either Eggsy or Crusher usually work really well here in general But sometimes there are drastic measures where if you're an ability based character you could go a toxic or you could go a beat stick uh, Depending on how ahead you are you could just go for pure damage go for some auto attack cancels But technically Crusher would probably be more DPS overall there, but that's almost all of what you need to follow for the general start of the builds, this will technically be like your fifth item with your attacker. So if you look at it like this, this is a very, very simple start. This is where most builds go, and most builds that I even go. But this is where things start to branch off and depend heavily on what character you are, what you're building, like what you're up against, so many little things like that. So All right, let's take a look at a couple examples here from a few of my friend's games. So if you look at it, uh, let's start with Oler's build. He started out with Attacker's Blessing, uh, he went to his Transcendence, into Boots, and then his Physical Defense. Same formula. And as you can see, one of them went Crusher, one of them went Beat Stick. Oler went Beat Stick because he wanted to counter out the Thor's, you know, his Bracer. And Thor actually decided to go Crusher for the max amount of DPS into Hydra's since he was ahead. And he, and he didn't really need to go beat stick because he was doing so much damage against his bracer and it's also personal preference so since Uller was behind he went into a titan's bane because that's when thor started his second defense item so as you can see they start to counter build each other as the game goes on we'll talk about relics here uh, at the end because that's on pretty much every single god it's not just physicals but i'm just going to go through some examples and see thor was ahead so we decided to go into a uh, double defense so the Uller had to you know straight up build into that titan's bane and sort of screw him out of uh, his next item because he was forced to kind of build with that specific item. So that's that for this one. Next up, as you can see, the formula continues. They had their starter item. They went into Transcendence uh, on Ravana and on on her. They went into their boots, into their defense item, and Ravana decided to rush a beat stick to deal with the, the bracer, which is personal preference. He could have went Crusher, could have went beat stick, but normally it's one of those two. Uh, and the on her actually decided to go into an executioner immediately because one of two things, he was anticipating that the Ravana would buy more defense, or he was behind enough to the point where uh, Ravana started Glad Shield, so he's like, I'm going to rush an Exe, because at that point in the game, he was seeing he's building more defense, so he might as well go into an Exe. And that can also be used to counter build. So let's say you see the Onher is going into a Crusher or something, or a Beat Stick, you could decide to then go like 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 the Ravana did here, like Glad Shield or, you know, a Nemean, like Double Defense, for example, to counter that. 
And then the Ravana finished the build with Titan's Main to get that extra last bit of pen that he needed at level 20 to deal with that. And then the Onher actually decided to go into Double Penetration uh, as well as Toxic Blade. The only problem being is that his last item with Toxic Blade, he was forced to go Double Pen to deal with the uh, like extra protections Ravana gets, I think, uh, as... I think he still gets those protections as a warrior. I think he got dumbed down a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's still higher than average. Uh, and to deal with that glad shield as well as the breastplate, so he decided to go double pen. In my opinion, I don't think he should have went double pen. I think instead of Titan's Bane, he could have went a crusher, because glad shield does not give that many protections, and Eggsy would have already been enough. Or just go straight into the toxic blade, but I think he was looking for damage since he was behind. So, straight into a crusher, and then finish with the toxic blade if that's the, the route he's going to go. So that's that. As you can see, everything past the, the beginning point of the formula, it sort of differs on counter building, as I mentioned earlier. So in this game, for example, you can see the Neath is actually behind. So he decided to go Transcendence into Traveler's Shoes to get to Wave faster and not miss as much XP because he knew the second Chrono started snowballing, it would get worse and worse the closer they got to late game. Because at this point in the game, there's so many things that the Chronos or the Neath needs to counter that Chronos, right? Because Chronos has a bank cross, he has lifesteal. He gets like a full set of lifesteal, he gets defense online faster, he gets percentage pen online faster because of the how cheap Bancroft is and stuff like that. But anyways, so the, uh, Neath got everything a step late, but he also, the Neath has to build anti-heal to have a chance in this matchup against the Bracer and the Bancrofts. So after his percentage pen, he has to go into a Toxic Blade, which kind of hinders his damage just a tiny bit uh, because the Kronos actually decided to go into a Wing Blade to avoid those slows and uh, give him a bunch of extra XP, or uh, HP, rather, forcing the Neath to actually go into a kin size, so it's more of a auto-attack based build. But it took too long to actually get the build online for the Neath, and as you can see in certain matchups like this, even when you're trying to attempt a counter build, it can be difficult because the enemy just has so much more in their kit. Like Bologna, for example, with the stacks, there, there's so many different types of kits and forms of different like mechanics like lifesteal and stuff like that that have to be countered, uh, in builds, so as you can see, it's all personal preference and when you're supposed to build what. We'll take a look at one more and then we will be moving on to Warriors, but here is another example of the build concepts. So as you can see, they both started off with their starter item that they switched out for Ichabal and Nemean, but they both started out different things. Transcendence, uh, basically their power spike items are HP spikes or movement spikes, uh, like in that early game stage. So one of them went Blackthorn, one of them went Transcendence, they both went into Boots and then Defense. Fenrir was looking for more of a passive playstyle to try and get to that sort of late game, like tankiness. So we decided to go Talarius so we can get the waves faster, make sure it doesn't miss as much XP. Who he decided to rush, as you can see, attack speed boots, and then immediately after his defense, go into Toxic Blade because the Fenrir is built in Lifesteal as well as the Bracer, which was really smart. So with the attack speed boots, he's able to proc it a little faster, as well as with that Exe. So he decided to go Exe next because he assumed since this Fenrir most likely was building tanky, he's probably gonna go with double defense. So he decided to go in that Executioner. And then he finished the build with an Ichabal. All very, very well built by the Huyi. Going, we're not going to talk about relics. Um, and then the Fenrir decided to go Blackthorn into the Talaria Boots defense once again. But he decided to go straight into a Hydrus because there wasn't anything he really needed to counter build here. Um, Crusher might have been a little more DPS. But if Fenrir was ahead, he could have obviously optimized with his auto attack cancels and stuff like that. And then he went into a Crusher uh, and then finished the build with double defense. Now... The Hui could have went Titan's Bane with the Ichabal. Either way, I think it was kind of fine. Um, but Titan's Bane might have done a little more against that double defense. Or even Akin's, maybe, with the extra Blackthorn health. Uh, might have done a little more for him. And keep in mind, you can sell your boots for these items as well. But this is just an example of the routes that you can go. Because this is like more of a tankier Fenrir build. There's tons of different things. But as you can see, it sort of follows the same like format, in a sense. That you just have to follow... So hopefully these next parts won't be as long because you guys will start to get the idea. I can just run through them and you guys are like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Anyways, let's move on to the Warriors. Let's take a look. All right, on to Warriors and some Assassins. By now, you 100% should understand the formula thing we're going with here. So let's get straight into it. So let's say you start out with Warrior's Blessing. Uh, there are a number of items that you could start out on. But there's, uh, there's typical starts that you, you see a lot, which would be, um, for example, Blackthorn right after Warrior's Blessing is a pretty popular one into boots, into your defense, and into, say, like your Arlong Shen, for example, 
you could start you could go into a stone cutting depending on depending on if you're auto attack based there's so many little vari variables at this stage in the game because as you know this does actually give a form of penetration as well as a, a, a few more protections so it's really good on characters like erlong and stuff like that but uh depending on your character you could you know build into your sort of pen based item like uh, a beat stick you could go uh you know your general counter items or items that you want to incorporate with your build but there's also dip oh Okay, I didn't save. Holy crap, that scared me. Okay. Um, so, there's also other variations of this, and I didn't save those other items. Shoot. Um, one sec. And so, as you can see, there it's just the same sort of formula, and then counter-building after uh, that part of the game. But there's also other things that I didn't mention, like the Fighter's Mask Start, which is basically a stacked Attacker's Blessing that only actually is available on Warriors and Guardians. Uh, but there's also other starts that some people would do like, instead of actually getting a starter item, they would rush immediately into a Golden Blade or a Hastened. One of these two items. They could go straight into this, uh, and then immediately into their boots. But like I said, this is the two. This is their Power Spike and Mobility Spike, and then they need their, their Defense Spike. And then they'll go into their next items, like let's say they're going more, more movement speed. Uh, if they do factor in, I don't recommend this, but you could go Hastened at this point. But I would much rather recommend... Uh, you going into something if you are gonna if you are relying on mobility like a collie or something stone cutting it's expensive um but it is an option there but you could also as usual like for, if you're, for example if you're a mercury or collie or something and you want more attack speed crusher just some form of penetration yada 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 build into your next items say you need a slow say you need power say you need anti-heal at some point in the game say you need percentage penetration whatever you need as the game goes on so with Warriors, it's pretty much the same thing, and uh, let's quickly go over a few examples here. Alright, so let's take a quick look at a few examples from ranked games on some Warriors here. Here we have Kukulin up against the Medusa. He starts off with a Blackthorn into his boots and into his defense, into his penetration, the usual format. So he starts off with Blackthorn for a bunch of extra HP, as well as Warrior Tabby. I actually would have gone um, Ninja Tabby since he was going an auto attack based build. And he also decided to go into a Nemean rather than a cooldown play because he is against an ADC. Then he went into his percentage pen, hastened, and he was finishing off with more attack speed after selling attackers. Now, the Medusa actually countered this um, by going Attacker's Blessing, Transcendence, Ninja Tabby, uh, his cooldown play, and then he went into an Azzy. Now, Azzy actually works really well into Nemean, and the, that forces the Kokolan to build more anti heal, right? So it just adds another layer of counter-building that the Kukulun is required to do. So he should have finished the build with, say, Toxic Blade or something like that, right? So basically, we have an auto-attack-based warrior build here. And then we have two people countering each other, obviously. Uh, right after the Azzy goes into Executioner. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see, the second you need something, or the, the moment you're going into a certain build, it sort of changes the path that you follow. Like, you should have went, I think, Ninja Tabi on the Kukulun. And then uh, with the Nemean, he would have been able to proc Eggsy a little more easily. He was able to stick a lot more easily with Hastened, etc., etc. Anyways, that's it for build 1. Next up, we have a Bologna game up against Izanami. It starts off with a typical starter build with the second tier Mask, which is basically a stacked Attacker's Blessing. You do a Ninja Tabby and straight into defense. Um, basically, he went... It, it's basically like boots straight into defense with this, what this build would sort of be. And the Izanami went straight into a Dev Gaunt Boots... Nemean build because you know they're both auto attack based. The Bologna actually built what I uh, I said earlier about the stone cutting after this. Since the Bologna actually didn't go a power spike item, he went the mask, but that was just his starter item, and he went into boots and defense. He has time with the extra gold since he's a little ahead on the build to actually go into a stone cutting, which works really well with Medusa and her passive and sticking to enemies, especially with those block stacks and proccing it is really easy. Combine that with Eggsy. The list goes on. Now, the Izanami, on the other, on the other hand, has Devgaunts to work with Lifesteal. She has uh, Boots, Nemean, and the Bologna actually has to wait until she can get Anti-Heal to really start the counter. So the Izanami decided to go full front into the uh, auto attack base build with an Eggsy into a Kins. I don't know how useful a Kins would be over a, a Crusher for pure damage since the Bologna isn't actually building into any real health. Maybe with that, that shield... Shields give health. Um, that might have been decent. But I think a Crusher overall would have done a little more for the for the Izanami here. But as you can see, it goes into Pen, and then you need a Percentage Pen. And then he was going into another Defense item, which I don't think was a good decision. I think he should have went into, a, like, a Toxic Blade, a Frostbound. He could have had something that, you know, adds more to his kit and sticking to his opponent 
yada yada yada. Anyways, that's the second one. Moving on to the third example of the warrior builds, we have a Vamana attack speed build. Now, this is a very, very popular build um, on Vamana, which is to start attacker's blessing, sometimes even start warrior's blessing into Talaria boots for that extra movement speed, straight into defense. The defense also, you know, works well with Vamana's passive. He goes straight into a Nemean to try and counter the, the Medusa. And then he goes into a Hastened and Stone Cutting. Basically, the idea as Vamana is to get as much movement speed as possible so you can stick to them in their ult, and there's very little they can do. The Medusa did very well with countering this by following the formula, straight into Boots, or straight into Transcendence Boots, or the Ninja Tabi, a cooldown plate, into his Percentage Pen. Getting Percentage Pen early against Vamana, as you can see, is a really good idea because, you know, Vamana feeds off of physical defense. And then he decided to go in Azzy, which actually forces the Vamana to build some anti-heal, and it actually gives Medusa a chance to sustain and, you know, win those longer fights. And he also went double defense, because he knows that the Vamana wasn't actually building any percentage pen yet. So what that Medusa can do, especially if he's ahead, is build sec er, two defense items, and then the, uh, the Vamana has to build a form of percentage penetration, and then the, v er, the Medusa could at any point just switch it out. Same thing with crit. If the enemy doesn't have uh, Nemean, you could buy one crit item at the end of your build, and by the time they can afford to switch out that cooldown play for a Nemean, you could just build back to your normal build. And there's just different forms of counter building like that. If you are ahead, keep that in mind. Build one item, or just a specific item like lifesteal, extra defense, more penetration, just things like that that will, you know, give you the extra edge until they can afford to actually counter build you before hopefully you can snowball and actually end the game before that happens. All right, let's look at one more before we move on to mages here. So as you can see, we have Radis Husker versus Erlong Shen. Erlong started with a starter item, maybe Warrior's Blessing, into the Healing Shield, Berserker Shield, Ninja Tabby, Cooldown Plate, Eggsy, into a Hasten. So basically, uh, he went the Shield into the Attack Speed Boots because it allows you, or the Erlong, to proc that Shield a little more, heal a little more off of it. And then he went straight into his Defense item, as usual, uh, into his Percentage Pen. He decided that he didn't actually need a Nemean, because he's up against Dorota Tusker, right? So who, you know, feeds mostly off of abilities. So he could just easily build a cooldown play for the extra cooldowns. Go into his percentage pen early on. Uh, you know, it kind of rules out in case the Dorota Tusker even goes double defense. Maybe Erlang Shen's just looking ahead, or just wants that extra pen. And then he goes straight into a Hasten, which I don't think is a good idea, because Erlang Shen already has that built in. But he could have went like a Stone Cutting. He could have went, you know, Frostbound, he could have went a number of things, and it looks like he's fin finishing off his build with an Ikavolt, which is a really good idea. And the Rotatusk is just forced to go, you know, his, his Acorn Transcendence, Defense, into a Beat Stick. Standard stuff, as you can see, everyone kind of follows that formula. But the Beat Stick was necessary, but the Erlong Shen was just so far ahead at that point. This is a really shitty matchup anyways, but basically he was forced to go beat stick and by the time he could even somewhat get his countering items online the Rotatoski or the Erlang Shen just has so much more going for him in his kit he's got his healing he's got auto attacks he's got defense online before him percentage pen Rotatoski has to build anti-heal etc etc hopefully you get the point a little better but anyways let's move on to mages last up we have mages and a little bit of guardians so first off let's get straight into it with the core item in the build. Now, 100% of the time, no matter what, no matter what god you're playing, almost all the time, Bancrofts is like the best item you can get. So, uh, with this build, we're going to incorporate, let's imagine you have a Mage's Blessing, or you just went straight into a Bancrofts. So, same formula. You will be going into cooldown shoes or pen boots, depending on what you want, Talarias, all that sort of stuff, yada yada yada, into your defense. And then, normally, this is very, very, very standard. This is what you're going to see a good chunk of the time, especially in Mage versus Mages or maybe magical defense probably, but you get what I'm saying. Um, pretty much you're going to need a uh, divine uh, if you're up against another mage almost all the time. Like, it's almost always priority to build a divine right after your defense just because the enemy is most likely going to have Bancrofts as well as a Bracer. So it's very important that you do that in Magical Mirrors. And then there's also gods like Hell and Ra, all these guys that can have additional healing in general. And then typically after that, you're going to be wanting to go into... Uh, a number of things, depending on what you want. Normally, some people will go into their percentage pen, like I typically like to do, but sometimes there is things that you need to actually counter build, uh, or you prefer to build into, like normal things, like, um, let's say you wanted a Chronos Pendant, and then your pen, uh, and that could be your full build. Or you could switch out Chronos Pendant for maybe a Rod, you could get a gem, depending on if you like the slow, for example, this could be a good Raw build, uh, simple things like that. And there's so many variations 
that can differ based on the type of god you are. Obviously, like pretty much everything we've been doing here. So, like, let's say you're a Freya. You go Bancrofts into your maybe pen boots in your defense, and then perhaps you can go demonic, and then you could go like uh, an attack speed route, and then like you know throw in a shaman, for example. Uh, there's just tons of different things you can do for mages, but in general, it's the same formula, but Bancrofts instead of your stacking item. But you could also switch out uh, your stacking item in the beginning, or even a stacking item later. Some people like to do after they get Bancrofts. Sometimes they'll throw like a, a warlocks at the end of the build. Um, and then there's different things like Ethereal Staff if you're trying to counter. We'll get into very specific uh, countering items as we go along here. But as you can see, uh, I don't have to talk about this too long because you guys are starting to understand that pretty much it all factors into the same guideline. So Bancrofts is basically like a full Devos, more power. <laughs> it's kind of stupid into your boots, defense. Some people like to rush a Gem of Isolation, for example, and then they could go into their pen. You could go pen or spear on someone like Poseidon, someone that can easily proc spear, like Anubis where they uh, have more use for an actual spear with that flat pen. And they can finish it with, like, shamans. There's tons of different things you can do. So let's just go over a few examples here. So taking a look at the mage side of things, you can see it's the same format. We have our bank cross for our power spike, our boots, into defense, into our normally penetration item. But in this case, the Vulcan is actually ahead. So he's able to throw in a gem of isolation before he even gets the vine. Probably mainly because he was ahead, wanted to secure abilities, and the Poseidon didn't actually go Bracer. So he's able to pick up a Gem of Isolation early on, and then go in into his Divine for Anti-Heal. Poseidon, on the other hand, looks like he went Mage's Blessing into Bancrofts, but unfortunately, as you can probably guess, the Vulcan was able to get the Bancrofts online faster than the Poseidon, so he probably snowballed a little harder than him. Now Poseidon, after he finished his boots and his defense, he went into a spear. Uh, spear is a lot better on Poseidon because the Whirlpool ticks. It's technically more efficient pen, um, depending on the character that you're playing, like Anubis, Poseidon, stuff like that. And it looks like he was going into a Gem of Isolation. So you're going to notice a trend here. A lot of mage builds are very, very similar. Next up, we have a Merlin versus Zonkui. Starts off with the Bancross, as usual, into boots, into his defense item. He decided to go into a Pestilence because Zonkui's obvious lifesteal added on with Bracer and Bancrofts. Anti-heal was definitely a necessity. Um, and then he immediately went into his spear, which is really good on Merlin as well because of his fire ticks. And th that's pretty much it. Like, the builds are pretty straightforward in terms of mages. The Zonkui obviously was memeing around, uh, you know, built a little, built his boots a little late. Yada, 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 but we'll talk about the Merlin's build. So yeah, that's that's all he did to counter it, is he had the, the lifesteal in the beginning, he had boots... Got anti-heal online as fast as possible, especially if he's ahead. He can get that online to counter him even sooner, and then he can go into his spear and then finish off his build with, let's say, like a, a poly or a chronos pendant um, if you want a more cooldown, like etc, etc. The list goes on. Now, here we have a late game mage battle. Uh, very, very end full builds other than selling boots. We have Bancrofts into boots, Genji's on the Merlin into his spear, Divine into double defense with the Pestilence. Now, the reason being why he did this is Baron, I'm guessing, went into his starter item into tier 1 Chronos Pendant, and then he finished his boots, maybe went to defense, and then went back and finished the Chronos Pendant, or he could have rushed the Chronos Pendant, but usually they will go into boots and then defense before finishing a big item like that, if that's the route they're following, because they're not going into Bancrofts. Baron also then went into a spear before his actual Divine, because he wanted to actually get those ult ticks, but... Like and get the uh, the additional damage of having a spear, but the the Merlin recognized this and decided to go into his double defense because he knows that probably at this point Baron would have been starting his uh, his divine, so he needs an obsidian if he's gonna power through that double defense. And the Baron actually ended up going into a poly instead of percentage pen, which is I'm not sure who actually won here, but I'm assuming it was Merlin. But yeah, they both went some anti heal because of the bracer Bancross meta. That's kind of a necessity. But as you can see, you can throw pretty much anything in at any point uh, with Mage Bills just to counter. Like the Merlin threw in his Pestilence for double defense to counter the Spear. Uh, Baron just ended up going a Poly. He had Chronos Pinnacle for cooldown resets, etc, etc. Alright, let's take a look at one more Mage build we have Hades up against in Achilles. So the Hades actually decided to go into a somewhat auto-attack based build, which a lot of Hades actually build nowadays. So you start off with Bancrofts, as usual, get the crazy early game pressure into your boots, defense... But this time he actually went into a Demonic, and then a Toxic, and then a Poly. So most of his build is actually auto-attack based. 
focused, which is a really good thing on Hades sometimes, because if you think about it, it adds another aspect to his kit. Rather than just being, you know, ooh, he has a two for the fear, he has his three, which heals him, does damage, he has his dash, and he has his ult. That's all he's got going for him. But with auto attack base, he can keep his distance, proc demonic giving him even more pen, proc the poly, poke from a distance, like a little more safely, poke towers, and the Achilles tried to shut down this healing as fast as he could um, by going boots into his Toxic Blade, Pestilence, Beat Stick, definitely not necessary. Wait, like, if he was going an auto attack based build and he wanted Toxic, he should have chose Toxic or Beat Stick, having both. Um, he's just sacrificing way too many things, like, he could have been going Percentage Pen or just tons of different items. Uh, but he's finishing off with a Titan's Bane. The build itself isn't too bad, but he definitely needs to switch out one of those anti-heal items. The Hades doesn't even have, like, Bracer or anything. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward the, for the mage builds, just like the other ones. Uh, you follow the format, and then build just to counter as you go along. Before we actually move on to the relic guide in Duel, I want to mention that I made a video a few years ago about counter building, and it still holds up to this day. Uh, some of the stuff is kind of out of date, but there's a ton of general information about counter building. Um, I know I wasn't able to go through absolutely everything um but this video will give you a really good idea as to you know how to typically counter build and stuff like that so i highly recommend um if you were even a little bit confused on counter building or you want some more information to go watch that video uh you don't even have to watch anything past like i think the 15 minute mark is when i go over the builds back in that meta but as you can see there's all these different like factors and counters to certain you know typical things when building so I highly recommend you actually go check that out if you are interested in more counter building. All right, now let's move on to your relic choice in ranked duel. Um, I actually put together a little set of rules that I thought I sort of followed, so it would make it a little more easy for those of you who don't want to actually listen to the reasoning for every single relic. But to start off, Bracer and Shell are probably without a doubt, and maybe Thorns are without a doubt, the top relics in duel. I want to start Bracer against more bursty characters, or when any more sustain, mostly against mages, for example, or high bursting physicals. Uh, Shell is good against gods with annoying anti heal, or an ADC without as much burst, like Apollo, for example. You're good against Shell, especially for late game. You know, you get the absorb stacks. Um, and then your second relic typically is more of a situational one. Um, if you need them, for example, Hades ult, you need a beads. Uh, Kraken, you need an Aegis. You know, things like that. Uh, thorns, if I'm not playing a magical character because Thorns is reflected as magical damage, meaning they're going to get magical defense, and Thorns isn't, thorns isn't going to be as, as effective as another relic. Um, and then I could go things like uh, Blink, I could go Sprint, um, and I could go Horrific if I need to chase an enemy that is jumping away a lot or has more mobility than me. Um, but yeah, that's like sort of the formula I, I follow for the most part. That's how I think about things, but let's get into detail on why these relics are so good. All right, let's start off with your starting relic. All right, let's start off with your starting relic. Basically, unless there's a clear reason why you shouldn't be buying Bracer or Shell first relic, you should 100% of the time be getting it. That's that. Thorns is a second nice little relic there, but it's generally not very good, obviously, when playing against a magical, like I mentioned. Um, but in terms of getting Shell over Bracer, there's a number of reasons. Um, some gods have built-in anti-heal to the point where Bracer just isn't as effective as the extra health that you get from Shell. And sometimes against an ADC, Shell can do just more for you in general, like with the extra health early game when they can't burst you as much, and, you know, the absorb stacks that it gives uh, late game. <clears throat> some people also choose not to get Bracer when they're playing a healer because the enemy is, you know, going to go anti-heal either way. Um, but the way I look at it is if I'm confident on a character like Hell, for example, and I'm up against another Burst Mage, I could use the pressure of constantly bracing early game as it would just do more for me for Shell, and then by the time we hit late game, you know, you can rely on the cooldown reset passive that it gives when it's upgraded. Now, this is all personal preference. Um, 